Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at telescoping series. It's part of sequences and series, and specifically it's a series, it's a summation. Now, this is a bit hard to read, but I'm going to read it out anyway. Uh, uh, by the way, it's best uh, viewing this in full screen. A telescoping series is a series whose partial sums eventually only have a fixed number of terms after cancellation. And these this approach is usually is commonly used for sums of certain infinite series. Okay. Uh, the thing to pick up there is that when after cancellation, a uh, finite number of terms. Okay. So here's the first example. Find this summation here from n equals one to infinity, one over uh, n times n plus one. Okay. Now. What we would normally do is outline the series and check if it is um, uh, evaluated. So here, the first term here would be, let's see if I have room on the next slide, yep, yeah. uh, 1 o oops, 1 over n times n plus 1. So the first term would be 1 over 1 times 2. The next term will be 1 over 2 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 4 and so on. So that works out to be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12 and so on. Okay, so uh, we can see this is neither arithmetic nor geometric, okay? That's important. It's no common difference There's no common difference and no common ratio. Okay, so it's not geometric and it is not arithmetic. So we have to use a different approach. Let's sorry, let's just go back here. The difference here essentially the differences are not uh, consistent and also it's not a common ratio. For example, one divide, one over two, the common ratio the ratio here would be a third, whereas the ratio here would be a quarter, okay, or sorry, a half, and so on. So they the, the, don't have a common ratio, and uh, the difference between the arithmetic difference between a half and one sixth is not the same as one sixth and one twelfth. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is separate the function into two distinct functions. Okay. So we're going to separate this up. We're going to separate uh, 1 over n times n plus 1, and we're going to separate up into two terms. The first term is going to be over n, and until we find out what the value is, the coefficient for that is, we're just going to call it a, and the second term, uh, n plus 1, okay? So what we have to do is evaluate for a and b, okay? Uh, so let's just actually work that out. 1 over n times n plus 1. This is cross multiplication. So a over n plus b over n plus 1. That will work out to be a n plus 1 plus b times n all over n times n plus b, n plus 1. So that is a n plus b n plus a. Okay. Uh, that would actually, so that's the numerator, and that would equal 1. We'll let the numerators of both sides equal each other. So that would equal that. Okay. So necessarily, we, we can actually also express 1 as 0n plus 1. Okay. That, that actually makes sense. Uh, we can also express a n plus b n as a plus b times n. Okay. If you match the coefficients, you can see pretty quickly that 1 must equal a and a plus b must equal 0. Okay. So I'm just going to sort of go to the next slide, but we've sort of broken the back of it already. So there I have what I've done on the last slide. Okay. Uh, so necessarily the coefficients equal each other. Uh, 0 equals a plus b and 1 is equal to a, okay? Now if 1 is equal to a, 0 
equals a plus b that's equal to 1 plus b equals 0 therefore b is equal to minus 1 so 1 over n times n plus 1 is equal to 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 okay now let's evaluate that for the first few terms again so for n equal 1 that the, the term would equal 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 the second term n plus n equals 2 the term would equal 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 the next one n equal 3 we would have 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 okay just let's consider that for a second so this is the first term here that's u1 second term u2 third term u3 okay so we're building up on something here so um, so we know now that a is equal to 1 and b is equal to minus 1 okay so we started with that and what we could say is that the gen the series can be written as that I'll just write it down here at the bottom because I realize it might be a bit hard to read okay now so yep yeah, that's it yeah so that's good so far that's the general term there is 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 now what we're remember what we were saying is that this is one half plus one sixth plus one twelfth plus one over twenty and so on that is what we found out earlier okay that was the summation but this was equal to one minus a half plus a half minus one third uh, sorry one half minus one third plus one third minus one quarter and so on okay now just look at this for a second if you just take out the brackets you'll sort of see that this uh, let's just take out the brackets so this here sorry this is u1 this is u2 second term u3 and so on. Uh, U1, U2, U3. I have a U4 up there. Now, let's just take out the brackets here. So we have 1 minus a half plus a half minus a third plus a third minus a quarter plus a quarter. That's from the next term and so on. You see pretty quickly that these terms cancel out. So minus a half plus a half, that cancels out to zero minus a third and plus a third that cancels out to zero minus a quarter plus a quarter cancels out to zero so the summation will in end up just convert, uh, being one okay so we sort of broken the back of it but I'll just go through the slides now and just let's sort of have a proper overview of it there we have it there um, so those are the terms there u1 u2, u3, u4 and so on and that's just cancelling out uh, components adjacent components from adjacent terms and letting them cancel out uh, just as it did there on the last slide so it ends up being 1 just 1 1 is the only term that doesn't get cancelled out so the summation there is 1 so that's that. We're going to look at the second example here now. So find this, this summation here, 2 over n plus 1 times n plus 3. And again, if we were to work it out uh, bit by bit, we would find that the first time is a quarter, the second term is 2 over 15, the third term is 1 over 12 or 2 over 24, third term is, or fourth term is 2 over 35 and so on. Now again, uh, neither symmetric nor uh, sorry, neither arithmetic nor geometric. So we're going to use the same approach again. Uh, let's do it out. So two over n plus one times n plus three. Let's just double check. I got that right. Yeah, 
let that equal to a over n plus 1 plus b over n plus 3. Let's cross multiply a n plus 3a plus b n plus b all over n plus 1 times n plus 3. So necessarily that must, uh, that's that's what we have there. So necessarily 2 is equal to a plus b times n plus 3a plus b. And therefore we can say, uh, sorry again, we can actually just let that equal 0 n plus 2. So necessarily a plus b is going to equal 0 and 3a plus b is equal to 2. Okay, so we'll just uh, hold on to that for a second and um, we will go to the next slide here. So there we are. First, we separate the function into two distinct functions. There we have it there a over n plus 1 and b over n plus 3. And we need to figure out what the a and b are equal to. So I have it done out here. This is just if, if you're looking at the notes uh, which are on the website. That's what we have got there. 0n plus 2 is equal to uh, a plus bn plus 3a plus b. Uh, yeah, so I've gone through the whole thing. So just essentially this is where we were. Uh, 2 equals 3a plus b and 0 equals a plus b. So a plus b is equal to 0. Therefore, a is equal to minus b. And the second equation was 3a plus b. Sorry, let's see, let b equal to minus a as well. 3a plus b is equal to 2. And if we're using this expression here, we could just feed that in there. So that's 3a minus a is equal to 2. a necessarily is equal to 2a necessarily is equal to 2. a is equal to 1. Therefore, b is equal to minus 1. Okay, so we have 1 and minus 1 here again. Uh, okay, so there we have it there, b is equal to minus 1 and so on. So essentially what we could do is we can rewrite the entire expression as follows, that our series is can be written as 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 3. Three. So that's the general term there. Now let's evaluate it for a few terms. So the first term, let's do it for two. Or sorry, n equals one. So that's one over two minus one over four. Have we got that right? Oops. So that's u1. Next one is. I'll keep this blue because I'm going to get rid of those brackets in a second. Uh, let n equal 2. So we have 1 over 3 and minus 1 over 5. Next one is 1 over 4, so I'm keeping that red, 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6, and we'll do one more, Just be very careful, I could just sort of trip up very easily here, so I'm being very... Uh, so 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7, and so on. So the first term there, u1, is a half minus a quarter. The second term there, u2, is a third minus 1 fifth. Third term, u3, is 1 quarter minus 1 sixth. And fourth term there is 1 fifth minus 1 seventh.
Okay, now again, what we're going to do is uh, look for cancellations. I'm going to just sort of take out the bread brackets there, just to make it a little bit easier to sort of see what we're doing. Just sort of sort of take out the brackets, um, to go through this. So the summation is equal to this. Now what we're doing is looking for terms that cancel out. So we have minus a quarter here, and that will cancel out with plus a quarter there. We have minus one fifth here, and that's going to cancel out with one over five here. Uh, this one sixth term is going to cancel out with the next term here, plus uh, one over six. And there's going to be a plus one over seventh term that later on, which is going to cancel. So that's going to cancel out with this. The uh, minus one seventh is going to cancel out with this two seventh. Uh, so the only terms that don't get cancelled out are the half and the third. So it's one half plus one third. Okay, all the other terms eventually will get cancelled out. So the answer is one half plus one third, and that is equal to five over six. So the answer turns out to be five over six. Okay. And okay so how do we know that to use this method to evaluate a series if it has something like this form here uh, then we can sort of rewrite it like that okay essentially if it has a sort of poly polynomial of de degree 2 quadratic something that you can factorize so we have k plus a there and k plus b we could just break it up into two parts like that and essentially um, that's when we know when we have something we can factorize and split up into two parts and use our cross multiplication skills then we can sort of know to use tele telescoping series alright that's the end of this one